information. Um, whenever you have a tag that has an additional piece of information, that's called an attribute. And that simply says a little more about the tag. So for example, if we have a link, okay, that's fine, we have a link, but a link to what? We need to know some additional information for that to work. It's not enough to say, hey, we got a link on this page. It's enough to say we have a headline on this page and this is what it is. All right, but if we have a link, we have to supply more information. When we click on the words web development or Lorain County Community College or about CISS 216, where are we going? That's the additional information that we supply. So we looked at actually two different kinds of links. We looked at this kind of link, which we'll say is a link to another site or a link to an external site. And you can get that usually by just putting a site that you want to go to and copying and pasting. The one thing you'll notice is it will begin with HTTP or HTTPS. So for example, this is a link to Lorraine Community College's page, which is www.lorraineccc.edu. But notice before it, you have href equals, and then in quotes you have HTTP colon slash slash www.lorraineccc. So let's look at the link completely. Here's our starting tag. We have our A. Notice that the, the tag doesn't close, but allows us to put the href attribute in. And then the, the starting tag closes. We have the text that the link is going to be, and then we have the ending tag. All right. So that's one way that links could work. This is when you have a link to someone else's website. And the key thing is, is it's going to be the address of the website or the web page, and it's going to have HTTP or HTTPS in front of it. Likewise here is a link to Wikipedia's page about web development. And all I did was go to that page, wherever that page was, and just highlight the address bar and copy. And I can just paste it in into the text editor. Now the other kind of link that we looked at is a link to another page that we create. So link to someone else's page, link to a page we create. And for now, we're going to keep everything in the same folder, all right? Uh, even if that folder is a desktop. So for example, when you're doing the project, you could go and I have these two files here. Um, CISS216 HTML and page1.html. I can create a new folder and we'll call it whatever we want to call it. I'll just call it Wednesday. And we can just put both those files inside that folder. So now they're both in the same folder. They were before, right? Because the desktop is just sort of a fancy folder. To get to a page in the same folder, if we've created it, all you need to do is supply the name of the file. So in this case, it is called CISS216.html. All right. OK. Questions about that? So yeah, go ahead. Uh-huh. Um, so is there another um, attribute for the link tag that is specific to another HTML or anything? No. Okay. So no. it's just all the attributes? Yeah, it's all, it's all the way this attribute looks. Okay. All right. Yes. So there's no backslash Wednesday. Repeat that, please. It, it, oh, good question. In other words, that doesn't, you don't say backslash Wednesday or something like that. If it's in the same folder, you don't need to specify the folder. 
is so it's the one that you're already in, right? So if you're in this page and you want to link to this page, they're both in the same folder, so you don't need to specify any folder. Now, later on in the class, we'll talk about what if they're in different folders. And then you just do a little bit more. But uh, for now, we'll just keep it simple and put everything in the same folder. This is convenient then when you turn it in, because all you'll do is zip up the folder, um, send to compress folder, and then that's what you'll turn in. All right, a couple more kinds of links that we'll look at real quick. One of them is an email link. All right, and I won't be able to demonstrate it completely on this uh, example uh, because um, this machine doesn't have email set up, right? This doesn't have Outlook completely set up. It's sort of like half installed. But I, I will be able to, to um, show you what you need to do. If I wanted to put an email address on this page, and I wanted it such that if I click on the email link, um, it will take you to your email program with the email already started. In other words, whoever the email is to, it will say, so you don't have to like retype the address. You can do something like this. I'll create a paragraph, and I'll say email ahref equals mail to colon, and then you can put the email address in. So, this is the same as the other two links. The student asked before, is there a different attribute for an internal link? And I said, no, it's just the way that the href looks. So the same thing here. This has an href just like the other ones had an href, just like the internal link did and the external link did. So it has an href as well. The only difference is, in this case, it starts with the words mail to colon, and then you put the email address. So if I have that on my page, then that'll be the link. If I click that link, it's going to start up whatever email program is installed. And again, there is really no email program installed on this machine, so it's asking us which, well, it's actually, there's several ones installed on this machine. So it's asking us which one do we want to use. I'll pick Outlook. It'll start up Outlook, but because uh, the email has been configured on this machine. Um, it won't complete the operation. It just goes to that. Questions? Yeah. Oh, yeah, right, right here. Email, then the link for more info, yeah. I'm sorry, repeat that please. The web page holder one. Oh, the one that's in the same yeah, folder? Yeah, like this. Okay, and it will automatically know about how does it know about like which folder? It is it assumes it's the same folder that you're already in. So both the both those pages are in the same folder. Okay. So if you're on one page and you click the link to it, if you don't specify a folder, it assumes it's in the same folder as this page is in. Oh, okay. All right. right. Yeah. You only need to specify it if it's in a different folder, and we'll talk about that later on. All right, there's another thing that we can do with links that is very common for things like frequently asked questions or uh, phone directories or um, things like that, uh, is, is we can have actually a link to a part of a page, all right? Um, let me show you an example of that, and then we will um, 
Well, let me show you an example of that. Then, then we'll decide what we're going to do next. example of an FAQ or frequently asked questions page. All right. Notice that these are links, right? Our pointer changes. But when we click on them, we don't go to an we don't go to another page. So if I click on this, notice that that question simply jumps to the top. So this page has all the answers on it, as well as all the questions. So if I click on question 9, boom, it pushes up question 9 to the top of the page. Then there's a back to the top link that we can click on and go back to the top. So these are links within a page. All right. And this is useful if ever you have a long page and you want to give an easy navigation to different sections of it. Again, frequently asked questions is a great example of, do, of, of that. Another good example of that would be like a phone directory. You could have each letter of the alphabet as a link. A, B, C, D. So if you had a big organization, you know, you click on the D, it goes to the Ds. All right? You click on uh, Q, it goes to the people whose last names start with Q, and so on down the line. So you don't have to scroll a long time to get there. It allows you just to go to, to jump there. And allows you to jump back up to the top as well. So I created an example. We'll look at that. And then we'll look to see how we could use it in our first example. So here is a FAQ page that I created. What is HTML, what is CSS, what is JavaScript? And as I click on one of them, one of them becomes, whichever one I click on becomes visible. And this depends, again, on the size of the window we have. So for example, if I click on JavaScript, JavaScript comes to the top. If I click on what is CSS, CSS comes to the top. Let's look at the code that does this. It's still going to be a link like all our links are. So far, all our links have looked like this. The A tag the href equals, then something in quotes. Then the text that we click on, and then the ending a tag. So between the start and end a tag is the text that we click on, the link text that we click on to jump to that link, wherever it is. The href, so far we've seen the href being someone else's page, one of our own pages, an email address, in this case, though, it's a section of the page. And the section of the page is designated by a pound sign in front of some name. All right? So for example, this href says href equals pound sign HTML answer. All right? Now, we have to tell the browser what do we mean by HTML answer. 
right? Because it's not obvious what that is. What it really is, what the pound sign designates, is the thing on the page that has an ID of HTML answer. So if we look here, notice this H2 has an attribute. And that attribute is an ID. So ID HTML answer. So if I click on this link, a href equals pound sign HTML answer, it's going to scroll the page so that this is visible. HTML answer. So in the href, you use a pound sign. In the ID, you don't. IDs can be whatever you want them to be, more or less. Uh, I think they have to start with a letter. Um, IDs shouldn't contain any spaces. And IDs should be unique. By unique, I mean there should only be one thing on the page that has a given ID. There shouldn't be two things on the page that have the ID of HTML answer. And if you think about it, think of your student ID number. How many other people have the same student ID as you do? No one, right? It wouldn't make sense if two people had the same ID number. You know, because you register based on your ID number. Um, you know, who would get credit for the grades? Who would get the bill? It'd be all kinds of confusion if two people had the same student ID number. So therefore, student ID numbers have to be unique. Same thing here. There'd be confusion on the page if there were two things that had the same ID. All right? And not just for this, but there's other uses for IDs as well that we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll study uh, in the upcoming weeks. Um, so therefore, the ID has to be unique. All right? So this is a different kind of link again. A href equals pound sign HTML answer, and an HTML answer is the ID of something. This again is another attribute. All right, an attribute, remember, we define as additional information about a tag. Yes, this is an H2 tag, but it's an H2 tag that has an ID of HTML answer. Yes, this is an H2 tag, but it's an H2 tag that has an ID of CSS answer. Finally, this is an H2 tag, but it has an ID of JS answer. Notice these attributes are, start, are part of the starting tag. In other words, we have the less than sign, greater than sign there, and the attribute goes between those two. So it's part of the starting tag. Notice also that the value of the attribute, or the attribute always looks like this. The name of the attribute, an equal sign, and then something enclosed in quotes. So it's like that for the hrefs too. Name of the attribute, href, the equal sign, and then something enclosed in quotes. All the attributes we've looked, like, we've looked at look like this. The name of the attribute, an equal sign, something enclosed in quotes. How do you get to the top of the page? You don't really need an ID at the top of the page. The top of the page is just designated by a pound sign. So if you see this, ahref equals pound sign, that means automatically, without you having to do something, jump back to the top of the page. Questions about that? Notice one thing I did on this page is I cheated a little, if you will. Notice that for these, I don't know how closely you looked at these, but my answers don't make sense. My answers look like they're Latin or Greek or something. That is called Greek text. Uh, and it's used by people designing web pages 
as just sort of a filler. All right. Um, so, for example, in this, when I did this example of class, I didn't want to sit here and type a complete answer of two paragraphs long about what HTML is. All right. I can, you know, if I was actually building this site, that would be something that I could build the code for and then go and fill in the, ex the, the, the exact answer later. But I want something to take up the space so I see how the page looks. So it's sort of like a placeholder text or filler text. You can actually go to different sites on the web and get some Greek text. Um, and it's just a way of, of testing out your layout uh, before you're ready to have the complete, completed content. Another thing that you notice on this page is there's, there's a couple of other tags beyond what we've talked about. These are sometimes called the structural tags, or uh, these tags are new with HTML5, all right? And they are the following, the header tag, the nav tag, the section tag, and the footer tag. And if you think about it, these are these define big sections that you'll find on almost any website. Almost doesn't matter what website that you can think of, you're going to find a header. In other words, you're going to find something on the top of the page that identifies what the site is. You can just pick a website at random, all right? And chances are there's going to be a header at the top of the page. Chances are there's going to be a navigation somewhere on the page, uh, uh, an area where you can click from link to link. Uh, chances are there's going to be um, the content itself, which may or may not be in separate sections. And then finally, there's going to be a footer at the bottom of the page that contains, you know, like maybe copyright information or other links or, or things like that. So, I mean, it doesn't even matter what we pick. We can randomly pick a website. Um, let's, let's pick Cleveland State's website. There's a banner on the top of the page. It tells you right away what the page is about. Right? You don't want someone guessing what your web page is. That'd be horrible, right? You get to a page and you're not really sure what it is. So you want to clearly identify what your page is about, what organization is, is it for, and so on. So this page right off the bat is in your face. This is Cleveland State University's web page. We have a navigation of different places we can go on the site. We have, we actually have a couple navigations, but we'll just really talk about the main navigation on the top of the page for now. We have sort of some sections here of different pages, student success, research, sustainability, education. Then we have like a footer at the bottom. The address, some disclaimers, and a couple of links. So header. Navigation, different sections, and then a footer. All right. So um, we can pick uh, another one. Um, I can't think of a web page. Um, pardon me? Think Geek. Think Geek, sure. All right, banner on the top of the page lets you know where you are. Links, so you know where you can get to. Navigation, different sections. Then finally, if we scroll far enough, we got a footer at the very bottom of the page. With in this case, they have links to their different social media accounts. All right. So we can pick just about any website, and it's going to have that, and really any page on a website. 
if we go to, for example, let's just pick a page here, um, GIFs. The page itself has banner, navigation, has some sections. Here's a little paragraph, different sections. Unicorn meat, that's horrible. And then finally on the bottom, there is the footer. All right? In fact, it's a good idea uh, to have sort of a consistency on your page, right? Um, on your pages, because that sort of educates people to how your website's structured. And so they become to expect that certain things are in certain places. And what's interesting, too, is a lot of places do sort of the same structure, right? Which, um, you know, just like, you know, like books over time have evolved a certain structure, right? Books have a cover that there's a title on, right? You don't think about that, but it wouldn't have to be that way. The title could be, uh, you could have a plain cover and the title be somewhere on the inside. But typically you have a book that has a cover, the cover has a title. You have a table of contents at the beginning. You don't have to put the table of contents at the beginning, you could put it at the end, right? And that sounds crazy, right? Because we're just used to it that way. We don't even think about it. If I gave you a book, and that book could be in, in some language you didn't even speak, and I asked you to find a table of contents, you could probably find a table of contents in any book in the world. You might not be able to read it, but you could find it. Why? Because we've learned over time that the table of contents is at the beginning of the book, because everyone does it. Likewise, an index. Picture of the author, or information about the author. All those things are in kind of standard places within a book. And so we could find them even if we didn't understand the actual language of the book. Same thing on a web page. We could go to web pages that we didn't understand, and we could pick out these main areas the banner on the top of the page, the header, the navigation, uh, different sections of content, and then finally a footer at the bottom. So there's tags for these. There's tags because it helps the browser understand the page, and more importantly, or, or just as importantly, it will allow us to style the page. Oh, we can make all our navigation sections look the same. We can make all our footers look the same. We can make all our headers look the same, and so on. So. Right now, if we look at this FAQ, we see that these handful of things are in the header of the page. So, these two things are the header of the page. Now right now, it looks like the rest of the page, right? Because we haven't done anything as far as the styling of the page goes. But we've defined that logically, this is our heading. This is our navigation. What is navigation? Navigation is simply a list of links. So we have in our nav section, we have a nav section. We have an unordered list with three list items. Each list item is a link to a different place on the page. So the first, our unordered list, the first list item is a link to what is HTML. Our second list item is what is CSS. Our third list item is what is JavaScript. All right. Then we have a section for each of the answers. Section for answer one, section for answer two. Finally, we have a footer on the bottom of the page. I didn't make a link for the email address. Because when I did this last year, I guess I did it in a little bit different order. But I could easily make that into a link for the email address, just like I did in the other example. So I've defined on this page the different sections. 
So let's summarize those sections. Header appears on top of the page. All right? Now, this gets a little confusing, right? Because there's a head section and then there's a header section. All right? Don't shoot me, I'm just a messenger. I didn't make this up. All right, but with a little bit of practice, you'll get used to the head and body are the two main sections. The header is sort of the banner at the top of the, of the page. The nav is the links. Links that allow you to navigate through a website or through a web page. Um, you could, or you could, typically you put it as a separate section. You could put it as part of the header if you wanted to. Like in some of the examples, I think you saw it looked like it was part of the header. But it could also be its own section. We have a footer. I'm going to go a little bit out of order here. That's at the bottom of the page. And this is like sort of like, I hesitate to say it, but it's like, Sometimes it's like the fine print, you know, like copyright information, address, telephone numbers, that sort of thing. Uh, we saw in the one page it was the social media accounts for that particular um, organization. It's stuff that's important, but maybe not like of prime importance. So you put it at the bottom of the page. We then have different areas of content. And in the example I gave here, I used a section tag. There's actually another tag that you could also use instead of the section, and that's the article tag. When do you use the section instead of the article? It's really a judgment, all right? If it looks like an article in a magazine, you'd put it in an article tag. If it's just a collection of some content, doesn't really look like a full-fledged article, maybe you put it in a section. Not, you don't want to necessarily, you don't really need to agonize between the two. Yes? No. It would not look different until you start applying a, style, applying a style to it. All of these are block tags. So if you put them on, they're going to be blocks that stack on top of each other. But they'd have no different default appearance until we start applying style to them. There's a third kind of section. I'll sort of group these together. And that is an aside. And an aside is when you have an article that's related to another article that's sort of like a side story. You know. Um, an example of that might be, you know, Yesterday, over the weekend, was the Cleveland Air Show, right? Let's say we had a page, uh, a, a site that had an article about the Cleveland Air Show. Um, there might be one particular pilot that was from the Cleveland area that we're just going to write a little blurb about and say that such and such pilot is coming home to Cleveland and is flying in the air show for the 10th year in a row or something like that. So it's sort of like... It's related to the main article, but it's like maybe one aspect of it. You see this a lot in magazines, you know. Um, that would be put in an aside tag, all right? Now, between these three tags, no one is going to complain too hard if you use one instead of the other. Obviously, you're probably not going to have an aside unless you have a main article, right? Uh, or a main section. But if you choose to make a tag a section and I would make it an article or vice versa, eh, it's not that big a deal. All right? Uh, it's just two different ways to say I have a chunk of content that's related. Either I have an article about HTML or I have a section on my page about HTML. Really doesn't matter that much. Now the header, the footer, and the navigation do have specific uses. So those it's pretty clear what you put in those. All right? Questions about any of this? 
Let's go back to this page here and let's put the header, the nav, and the sections and the footer on it. All right? And we'll see it's not going to make it's not going to matter what what it does as far as the appearance goes. But and we we'll either get to it today or we'll get to it next time when we start styling this page, we start adding color and different fonts and borders and things like that. Then we'll we'll have sort of hooks that we can say, I want to make my header look a certain way. And then every header on every page will look that way. All right? And that's good. That's consistent. All right, so I'm going to put here, yes, thank you. All right, it's pretty clear that this stuff is the header of the page. Now, this paragraph here, I could say it's part of the header, or I could say it's its own section. That's one of those things, again, you know, don't, don't sit there sweating about it. I'm going to say this paragraph here is just part of the header. Then I would say we have a section about CISS 2.16. A section about CISS 232 and a section about CISS 243. And this at the very bottom of the page is sort of my footer. Got to close the paragraph tag from before, so I'll do that, and I'll put the end footer tag in. All right. Now, if I look at this, doesn't look any different than it did before. All right. I'm going to go and add a navigation section to this. All right. So, I'm going to do like I did in the FAQ in the navigation section. I'm going to have an unordered list of links taking me to each section. href equals pound sign CISS 216. And save it. Are these links going to work now?
Pardon me? They don't go anywhere. I haven't defined what those IDs mean. Okay? So I said this goes to uh, an ID of CISS 216, but I haven't really put any code in that says that this is CISS 216. So I have to go and put the ID in. So I can go and say ID equals CISS 216. ID equals CISS232. ID equals CISS243. Now this is a pretty small web page, so I'm going to scroll. I'm going to make it smaller like this. And now, if I click on this link, boom, that becomes visible. Or if 232 is invisible, if I click on it, boom, that jumps to the top. So I need those two things. I need the ID, and then I have to say what that ID means. I can put the back to top link on it like this. I can copy that at the bottom of each of these. All right. And we should be back in business. we can jump down to 232 and then we can go back to the top. All right, what I'd like to do with the last five minutes is just start talking about style and making your pages look different. Because everyone's pages for the first couple weeks of class look identical, right? They look like this. They look like a mix of headings and lists and paragraphs and links and, and things like that. We're going to though add some style to the page. We're going to change the appearance. All right? And we do that for a couple reasons. First of all, we want our pages to look good. Right? No one wants to look at ugly, plain, boring pages. We want them to look good. We want them to have some sort of aesthetic appeal. But it goes beyond that, too. Um, color can help sort of brand a site. I hate to use that word because I, I don't like that word used that way. But, but um, you, you can sort of fit the corporate image. You know, a, a site about Barbie is going to be in pink. A site about a heavy metal band is probably going to be in black, right? You know, you can you get sort of an impression about the organization just by looking at the site. You know, a, a sports team is probably going to use the colors of their, of their team and so on. All right? So you can use that to sort of evoke a mood. The other thing you can do is you can help your users clearly identify the different sections of the page by putting in different colors. All right? So I'm going to just do some real simple things here. And we'll talk about, we'll start talking about CSS. And we'll start talking about colors. And we'll hit that really hard on Monday of next week. All right? So how do I add style to a page? First of all, this is a whole new language. All right? And your browser has to know what language you're talking. And by default, you're talking in HTML. So if you're talking in any other language, you have to tell the browser that. How do you tell the browser that? In the, in the head section, not the header, but the head section, use a style tag. That tells the browser, hey, we're starting to talk in style language here. 
This says, hey, we're done talking style language. We then have a set of rules. Rules for how our page is going to look. So I'm going to make these, I'm going to make, I'm going to use obvious colors so it's very visible to see what I'm doing. All right. I'm going to make the background of the, of the page Make the background color gray. No, yellow. Brighter color. Oops. So body corresponds to the body tag. What this is saying is everything in the body. The background of it, and again, that's a, a word in the language, colon is going to be yellow. So this is like saying the background is equal to yellow. So if I go and do this, boom, and now I view this page, the background of the page is yellow. All right, yay. Now everyone is going to have a, now everyone's going to have a yellow page for their next assignment, right? All right. Now, that's to do something for the whole page by putting a style rule for the body tag. We can pick certain sections of the page and we can use the, the, the tag uh, to designate that. So, for example, I could say header, I want the background to be white. Now, what do you think that does? That takes everything in the header section and makes the background of it white. So now the page is mainly going to be yellow, because the whole body is yellow, except that header section is going to be white. All right. Now. Keep in mind a couple things. You can do this on every HTML tag. So you can make every HTML tag look different. Would that be a good idea? Probably not. All right. Background is just one thing that we can change. We're, I'm just changing the background color because that's the easiest to demonstrate. I could change the font. I could change the color of the text. And all those things we'll look at in subsequent weeks. All right. Um, if, you, if you didn't get what I'm doing here, don't worry about it. It'll come. We'll spend more time on it Monday, and we'll spend more time on it throughout the course. So I just wanted to sort of give you uh, something to think about, something to play with. You're welcome to try this out on any of your labs that are upcoming due. So you, know, you can go and, and play around this if you want and, and try to get uh, your page to look a little bit more distinct than everyone else's. We'll continue this discussion on Monday. All right, we'll see you in lab.